Well, uh, welcome on in, everybody. We're getting towards the end of our week. It is Juneteenth, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the importance in kind of the healthcare world and, and what we're trying to bring to light uh, in kind of an overall movement that I think a lot of us are, are pretty stoked on. Uh, what you need today, you're going to need those two moderate weights, and you're going to need a, you're definitely going to need a heavy weight. So something like a bag or the detergent is a good call today. Now, you could use another weight if you have it on the side, uh, but literally those are going to be kind of a great option for what you're doing today. Uh, beyond that, we're in our new programming where we have our pyramid of power going on. We have our new 222s. Two, two, uh, we also have that extended Tabata at the back end of things. Um, so we'll kind of get into what we're doing. If you got some tunes, now is the time to go ahead and hit that play button. We're going to get into our regular warm-ups. So we're going to start on the floor here, hands and knees position. We're going to lift up that opposite hand and foot, and then we're just going to bring it right back down and switch it over. With the lift, try to breathe in. Okay, so when you lift, breathe in. Exhale, bring it down. And give it two more here. Nice reach through hand and foot. All right, last one. Okay, come flat to the floor, arms wide. They give you a little bit of balance. Right foot lifts up. We go scorpion kick to one side. Then we bring it back in. We switch those legs over. Awesome. Okay, so working on maybe expanding that kick with your next few. Maybe you can feel the hip, the low back, things opening additionally. Last two here. And last one. All right, plank position. Have your feet a little wide in your plank, and then let's walk it back all the way. Come on up, bring those arms up nice and tall. All right, make sure that the feet are wide enough for a low squat from this point. We're gonna fold forward towards those toes. We're gonna wiggle our hips a little bit, do a little side to side jazzy stuff. And then we're gonna bring it down to that low squat. We're gonna hold it for a few seconds, we straighten up, we pull those arms up, and now we drive on up, okay? Fold it back down, give me a little bit of that nice wagging of the tail. Lower it down, give me a nice straight spine here, chest up, move around a little bit, three, two, arms up, stand up, and we got final one, bringing it back down, swinging side to side, and lowering, but maintaining movement, still down here into that low point. Hands up, stand up through those heels. Excellent, you got kicks up next. So one hand goes out, the opposite foot kicks towards it, and we switch it. So as you kick, breathe out. Let's find the breath with the movement. Got three more here. And last one. All right, from here is your golf stance. So athletic position with your hands together and point it a little bit out in front towards the floor. As you stand, you're going to breathe out. You're going to open the arm. As you come back down, you breathe in. Okay, stand, breathe out. Inhale, squat. If you're feeling real good, maybe you start adding a little depth to that squat. And give me the last two here. Very good. All right. And then Jackson and I, once again this week, are going over the body roll. So grab your two moderate weights, come down to the floor, be on your side facing us in your screen, please. Bottom hand, we're going to have that pretty close to the body. Top arm is straight up over top of the shoulders. Both our feet lift, and we roll it over 180 degrees to the opposite side and rotate that press of the shoulders. Now, Jackson noticed yesterday that he kind of extended his roll further then he should have, and he, he felt a little funky with that. So I would caution you, don't let your body kind of go further than 180 degrees of rotation through here. And even a little bit less, maybe 150 or so. That could work A-OK -okay as well. We're going to go through two more here, two more rolls. Rolling over, pressing. Last one. All right. And so from here, we're going to be working into our first set of two two twos today. We're going to be on the floor with those two moderate weights underneath us. We're going to be getting ourselves ready for doing the combination of renegade rows first off, and then following that with heel lifts. So we're going to get you started in three, in two, in one. You got that renegade row first. It's 
So Jackson's keeping his body good and still. Then those legs come up, right? Stand up, two squats, followed by two lunges. Now for my more moderate crew, remember you can be down on the knees right here, and you're gonna keep those hips forward for those renegade rows, as well as for those heel lifts. So once again, you're down here, we're gonna just make sure those hips stay under. I don't want your hips back here. Hips stay a little bit under. Knock those two out on either side. Two on the legs, two on the arms. Then we step up, we bring the weights up with us for those squats. And we do those step back lunges. All right, little over 10 seconds to go. So wrap through whatever reps you can. And then we'll be doing standing for our mobility movement today. Three, two, one. Go ahead and release the weights. Come to a wide stance with your feet, with your toes a little turned out. We're going to come to the bottom of a squat right here. We're going to hold it. So I want you to try and work on even sitting into this a little bit with the hips. And now one hand is going to reach up. We're going to look at that hand. We're going to bring it back down and in. We're going to switch it over opposite side. You got it. Now, as that other hand stays put, that arm is doing a little bit of a push out against that leg. Tiny bit, not a lot, but enough to engage some extra stretch. Once we're done with this, we're going to go to our side on the floor for those body rolls we just practiced in the start of our core three. Three, two, one. Come down to the floor, have those weights facing us. You're on your side, you got one weight against the body, other one up, start rolling in two, in one, roll it over and switch the arm press. My more manageable folk, you got those feet on the floor, you're letting those knees do it a little side to side, but you're still finding and feeling the core and the hip muscles making you do the turn. Excellent. After this, our following movement, we go straight in to the bicycle straight leg kick. So we'll be putting down the weights and going directly into that bicycle in three, in two, in one. Hands go behind the head for that bicycle. Once again, straight leg kick of opposite elbow to opposite knee. My more manageable folk, we're knocking out those bicycles with that bent knee coming in. And everybody's prioritizing a little low back push down into the floor for not only the extra recruitment, but also kind of a grounding effect in what we're doing. Final movement has a superman position. Three, two, one. Turn around, arms out, lift hands as well as feet. One arm comes down to the side, comes back up and switches. My more manageable folk, let's keep those elbows closer to the ribs. And you can just extend through the elbow and curl back in through the elbow. 10 seconds, smooth, steady breathing. We go finished up in three, in two, in one. That's rest time, everybody. We're getting warm right off the bat. Yeah, I like it. Now, I don't know about you all, but it was a nice chilly morning over here in Santa Cruz. And it feels good to uh, get a little sweat going when you've been a little colder than usual. <laughs> all right. So we've got pyramid movements to go over with you. Um, for the most part, I've kept them about as simple and basic as I can for the most part, movements that we practiced a lot. However, our first movement is one that we've got to go over a little bit. We're going to use a heavy weight for our first two movements. So practice with us if you'd like uh, out there. I've got my bag. I've loaded up with some books today. Jackson's got detergent. We want to get ready for another low squat. So we want our feet to be a little bit wider, our toes to be turned out. We're going to come down to the floor. We're going to tap the bag to the floor. And then we're going to put it onto one shoulder. The other arm kicks out, and we stand up strong through a squat. Come back down, tap it to the floor, bring the weight on the opposite shoulder, kick that arm out, and then press up through a nice strong squat. So you're kind of working on good control and loading a single side of the body as we go through that squat. So that's exercise number one. Exercise number two, we're going to keep that heavy weight. We're going to do a lateral lunge and a balanced shoulder press. We're going to start going to our right side, stepping out for the lateral lunge, standing up, pressing the weight up, and repeating to that single right side. Second time around, we'll switch to our left. Third movement, we put the weight down. We stay standing. 
we're doing our curtsy mobility move that we've been practicing recently. So we're going to step over to one side curtsy style, and that inside arm is going to do a little reach up and over. We stand back up, we switch it over. You got it. So we'll go through that, and that'll have a little bit of kind of like a recovery associated with it. Second half of the movement takes us down to the floor. So come on down to the floor. You're going to be on your back. We've got an over-under leg kick. So both legs straight up. One leg up and over, then switching over to that opposite side. After that, we find that heavy weight down here on the floor. We go kneeling position, and we're going to sit back and down. And then you're going to press up and bring that weight up and overhead. So control coming down, and then press up as you drive up. Control it down, press up, drive up. Final movement. We take a little bit of what we did yesterday in Tabata. We go plank and give me a bird dog plank if you can for 10 seconds. If you can't, you do your regular bird dog hold with that right arm lifting first. Those are your movements for your pyramid. We will be calling it out as we get going. You need one heavy weight around you, folks. We'll get you started very, very shortly. Get yourself ready from a standing position. All right, so in 10 seconds, we start that low squat with the heavy weight sitting on a single side of the shoulder. Feet a little wide, we start in two, in one, come down, put the weight onto one shoulder, kick the other arm out, and drive up nice and strong. Drop it back down, little tap, reset before you drive up, right? I don't need you doing this one quickly. I need you doing this one well. Now, more manageable approach. We can keep that weight and we just work getting into those squats depending on to where your body's giving us depth-wise. Once again, we've got about one minute of our squats here and 15 seconds of rest between that to our then lateral lunge. Perfect. Jackson's doing a really good job of taking his time. You'll notice from that side angle, he's doing also a tremendous job of keeping his back straight through that squat. We've got ourselves about 10 more seconds from here, 15 seconds of rest follows. We will be keeping the heavy weight. Finished up in three, in two, in one. So 15 seconds of rest. Your second movement is the lateral lunge to the right side, bringing up the right knee and pressing the weight up. We get started in three, two, one. Sit into that up and balance. More manageable approach. Take your time, don't go very low here, and then you could even tap the toe if you need it for that little balance help at the top. So my more manageable approach, you're watching me, I'm going to have my right toe just gently tap the floor. So I'm still practicing balance, but I'm not quite all the way into that full balance state. Nicely done, Jackson. So Jackson's doing, once again, great job of controlling what's going on. I don't need rapidness through here, especially when he's got a few knee issues. We want to work on the stability of what we're doing. Got ourselves about 10 more seconds, then we're going to put the weight down, and we'll have those curtsies to follow. Let's go finished up in three, in two, in one. Let's put the weight down. Next up is that curtsy step and that reach, one of our previous mobility moves, where we go here, and then that inside arm overhead. We'll get started in three, in two, in one. Step to one side, bring that inside arm overhead. So as we work through this, I do want this to be a little more curtsy where that back knee bends. Okay, if you can get that back knee to bend, start giving us some depth into that. And of course, you're always pushing up through that forward heel. My more manageable people were staying a little higher through that. And that is a-okay as well. Less back knee bending for that more manageable approach. Last little bit, and then we're going on to our back on the floor. On the floor in three, two, one. Come down to the floor, go onto your back. We've got those kicks that are going to be over under next. But don't start yet unless you're feeling ready for it. We'll get started in three in two, in one. So eyes are up at that screen. If you need to be a little safer, you're gonna keep those feet just a little bit higher. You can make it a little easier on yourself. 
you want to get extra challenge, you start going lower in depth and you start recruiting more of the core through that motion. Once again, my more manageable option, we're staying a little higher through this. And activate some low back if you can, folks. Think about that. Use it. Feel it and be it. Three, two, one. To your knees, grab your heavy weight. Kneeling overhead lift. We're going to start seated and lift in three, two, one. Up and overhead. Control coming down. Drive the hips forward and really pull that weight up and back. Now, more manageable approach. Elbows just stay a little bit more bent and we're not lifting as high. All right, we go finish with this in three, in two, in one. Plank bird dog or bird dog hold, whichever set, whatever we do, it's the right arm up and the left arm, left leg back. Two, one, lift. Excellent. More manageable approach. We're here. Three, two, one. Down and rest. You made it to the top of the pyramid, everybody. Hopefully you can see some good sights over there. <laughs> I'm just looking down. You're looking down? <laughs> oh, man. It's a long ways down. Seems like he's got a wide base going down, doesn't it? Uh, a few virtual high fives out there for everybody. That one goes out to Ryan right here. I got Tina in the corner. Boom. Love it. All right, so we've got repeat, but we're reversing it. We're going to start with that funky bird dog plank or just a single bird dog hold. We'll get going in 10. So let's keep you on the floor from here. Plank or regular bird dog. Left hand up in 3, 2, 1. Holding. 10 seconds of a hold. Smooth breathing. Good reaching, in three, in two, in one. Next up, grab the weight, stay on both the knees, lifting up from that kneeling press. In three, two, one, bring it up, control it down. Drive those hips forward, get a little butt squeeze as you push your hips forward. More manageable approach, elbows stay a little bit more bent. Maybe you don't want, we don't lift that weight all the way up. Let's think about core recruitment. Three, two, and one. Turn around. Go onto your back. We've got that over under kick. Legs up. We get started in three, in two, in one. One over, one under. Feet can be higher if you need that as a little bit of a breather. Feet can be lower if you're looking to take it to that next level. 15 seconds. Time is increasing with our movements. After this, we'll be standing into that curtsy next. Finished up in three, in two, in one. Stand with us. Get ready for the curtsy. Good step laterally. In three, in two, in one. That inside arm raising overhead. A smooth switch. More manageable approach, we stay higher into this. We still allow that arm to raise overhead to give us that nice inside body side stretch. Got it. Keep on moving through there. Find strength in your forward foot. Find balance into that forward foot. After this, we're going to be grabbing our heavy weight and we're going to be doing our lateral lunge to the left side. Last few, finished up in three, in two, in one. Grab that heavy weight, have it in front of you, have room to move to the left. Lateral lunge, left leg lifts, and we get into that shoulder press. We're going to get started in three, in two, in one. Step it out with control, bring it up. More manageable approach, we do less of a deep squat, and then smooth and not pressing those arms all the way up either. You got it. So working stability. Can you lock yourself at that top point for a quick moment in time? Can you feel that the hips keep you in place? Can you feel that the core gets you into place? There we go. 
let's watch that knee, try to keep it straight on the inside, bingo, bingo. You can keep that inside knee straight, a lot of times it likes to bend, it'll give you a bigger stretch through here. We'll go finished with this movement, in three, in two, in one, our last movement, keep the weight, low squat, but that squat, we're shifting the weight to different shoulders. So feet are wide, toes might be lightly turned out, we come all the way down, and then let's figure out where that weight sits well. Three, two, one. Drive up, try to feel both heels doing work. Set that well before you drive on up. Okay, now a more manageable approach. We're just gonna do some squats with holding that weight in front. All right, working your way through here. Remember, as we finish this, you've got 30 seconds of rest and then the two, two, two. So we don't have a long break until we get through that next two, two, two section. Smooth, straight back. Prioritize a straight back, everybody. Prioritize the heels driving you up with a little bit of power. 10 seconds. There we go. We go finished up in three, in two, in one. Now, 30 seconds of recovery. We're going to be back down on the floor for those two, two, twos to follow. Two moderate rates should be on the floor. We're going to start with those renegade rows. Once again, you can be on the knees for help. If you need any water, grab it quickly. About 10 seconds and we get going. Okay, so have those moderate weights underneath. Two renegade rows starts in three, two, one. Moderate option has those hips forward from that kneeling position. Two leg lifts and then bring it up. Two squats and two lunges from there. Okay, back down to that floor. You're on the knees, give me that little hip press forward. Two legs. Bring it up, you got squats, you got lunges. Nicely done. Work on balance of a good lunge. Work on power through heels when we get up to that leg work up top. Heels, 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 10 seconds. After this, we'll have our standing mobility move next. Three, two, one. Put the weights down, wide squat position, bring it all the way down. One hand reaching up, eyes up. Come back down into that low squat and switch it up. Okay, a more manageable approach if you need to be a little higher here. We can still get some good activity. Kind of work through that side to side, watching the hand and doing a minor press to the inside of that leg. Now work on sitting if you got it in you, and it should really take a lot of the stress of holding a lunt or holding a squat away. All right, we go to the side in three, in two. In one, so we're at our side position, two moderate weights close by, one up, one against the chest, feet lifted, turning in three, two, one, rotate, press, rotate, press. Okay, feet could gently be tapped onto the floor, but you're gonna find and feel those abs and those hips doing the turn in for you. Right, in 10 seconds, we go straight into the bicycle straight leg kick. We'll be putting the weights to the floor in three, two, one. Weights to the floor, hands behind the head. Give me that kick. Let's make it smooth. Remember, elbows or knees bending turns it into that bicycle and that more manageable approach here. After this, we're going to be turning around and going into that Superman position with those single arms reaching behind us. We'll be turning around in three, in two, in one. Turn it around. 
lift everything up and hold it, one hand reaching back, then that next arm. Okay, control through one arm before we make that switch. Elbows close by the ribs and reaching back with an individual hand if you need that option. 10 seconds, smooth breathing, break is coming up. Starting in three, in two, in one. That is the sweet sound of the bell, everybody. Ooh. Take a little breather. <laughs> High fives abound, please. Give some love to anybody, even if they're not working out around you right now. Just turn around and give them a high five. Or like we talked about yesterday, just turn around and pet the dog. Oh, that's, that's all good, too. That's good stress reliever. <laughs> you're comboing stress relieving if you're petting a dog and exercising at the same time. You're like ultimately winning through there. <laughs> all right, so Jackson and I need to go over the extended Tabata that we got set up for you. Let's go ahead and do that right there. Very good. Okay, so first up, we're going to be working with doing a balanced squat hold. So we're going to need a single moderate weight through this one. We're going to have it holding in the right hand as we get started. You get into a good squat down, and then your left knee lifts as your right arm presses. You'll bring it back down. You'll stay on that side for that 20 seconds, or excuse me, that 30 seconds before we switch it over. Okay, opposite side, just simple, same movement, left arm up with the right knee lifting. Second movement is a split stance. So we're gonna have one foot forward, one foot back. We're gonna tilt the body in. So I don't wanna be up here, but I wanna be tilted forward a little bit. And then we're gonna do a single arm fly out to that side and a smooth release right back down. And working through that, if you need, you could bend that elbow as a more manageable approach. After that, we're gonna be going to the floor. So this is three new movements down here on the floor. You will not need any pillows or weights. We're gonna start with our hollow hold. This one, your feet might be a little wider and higher. And as we do our hollow hold, we're gonna do a tiniest crunch to one side, come back up, and the tiniest crunch to the opposite. Okay, so small crunches, but a great way to engage those obliques from that hollow hold position. So that is exercise three. Exercise four, we're gonna cross the right leg over the left like our figure four stretch. We're gonna lift up and hip press it. So we're doing that reverse crunch on a single side. We'll coach you through kind of what those options are and we'll switch to the opposite side the second time around. Our third and final movement is a single leg hip press. So we're gonna have your right leg straight first. We're gonna lift up and hold. Then we're gonna extend the leg out, come back in, keep it up. Your hips stay up the whole time, and you're just having that leg go out and in for that 30 seconds before we switch. All right, so those are your movements. We will call them out as we get to it. Where I need you is standing up. We're getting ready for a squat and a single arm shoulder press, a balanced single arm shoulder press, one side only. 30 seconds for each side. We'll get started in 10 seconds officially. Good squat position. Weight in that right hand. Squat down and press. Three, two, one. Left knee comes up. Bring it right back down and stay on that side. More manageable approach. We just don't go quite as low through that squat. And maybe we don't even press that weight up all the way. We could even tap the toe as that more manageable approach as well. Good. Think about you press that weight straight up. We've got that back shoulder turned on and working. Go last few, finished up in three, in two, in one. Got 10 seconds. We're switching over to the left side. Your right knee does the lifting this time. Three, two, one. One squat. Press up control. Return back down. Repeat. Once again, we don't need to go all the way into that squat. We don't even need to go all the way into that press if you need some options through that movement. Ten seconds. Give me tall at the top, everybody. Tall at the top. In three, in two, in one. Next up, keep the weight. Split stance. And we're going to be lifting one arm out to that inside of the back leg. Two, one, tilt forward, smooth coming down. Now that elbow can be bent as that more manageable approach. 
We could be a little higher up as a more manageable approach as well. But the more you can get a little bit of that tilt forward, the more core is activated into our movement. Got a lot of balance and strength in that forward leg. Finished on this side in three, in two, in one. Switch the stance, switch the hands. Get settled into it, back foot on the toes, in three, in two, in one. So once again, Jackson's doing a great job of modeling what we want for that back, right? I want you to try and find and feel that through your back. And then he's also not lifting that weight too high up towards the neck. It's a little bit below that shoulder line. So more like, as opposed to here, a little bit more down here as he's doing that pulling so we can engage that lat better. After this, we're going to be putting the weight down. We're going to be coming down to the floor on our back. Two, one. Put the weight down. Come on down to the floor. Hollow hold with that side crunch next. Three, two, one. So you're working on a tiny rotation side to side. All right, now if you need a more manageable approach, one foot could go to the floor, and we can still work through that. Okay, practicing. Remember which foot is on the floor, so second time around we can make the switch. Got 10 more seconds. Breathe, eyes up at that ceiling. In three, in two, in one. That's good. Next movement is our figure four. Wrap your right leg around your left. We lift up in three, in two, in one. So we get that reverse crunch. Hands are down at your side. More manageable approach. We're just going to lift the knees in and lower them back down. You can also tap that long leg heel to the floor as that more manageable approach here. All right, we got 10 seconds. And then we'll be going into the single leg hip press to follow. Finished in three, in two, in one. So let's keep the left foot flat on the floor, right leg extends out straight. We're going to come up and have extensions out to the right side. In two, in one. We stay up, we kick that leg out. Now, more manageable approach for people. You can kind of drop the hips back down, keep the leg out wide, and we can work kind of that wide single leg hip press if you need it. All right. So Jax is doing a good job of putting breathing to this. As the leg kicks out, he is breathing out. Kick out, breathe out. Three, two, one. Let's come down, switch to the right foot being flat on the floor. Left leg straight. Lift on up in three, in two, in one. And just kind of figure out where that works best for you. You notice Jackson just shuffled closer towards me. We're good friends. It's okay. <laughs> Knuckles, bro. <laughs> All right, so halfway through it, 15 seconds. Find that outside hip. Find that glute doing some good work for you. Perfect. Last little bit, folks. We're going to go finished up in three, in two, and rest, recover, breather, break time. You got one round remaining, but you know it's going to be a doozy because we're going to be tacking on those two, two, twos one more time. Okay. Let's get you some water. Let's get hydrated. Let's allow energy levels to kind of rebuild for a moment here. And if you're feeling good, you know, just dance it out because it's Friday. Always a good feeling on a Friday. Jackson, how are we doing over here? Doing good. Doing good? Humidity is. That's the factor right Humidity's now. Humidity's building. That makes it's sense. Very humid right here. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good place to expel stuff from the body. <laughs> That's perfect. All right, folks. So we've got one more round of extended Tabata coming up. We're going to have a single moderate rate associated with what we're doing. That's it. I'm cutting it. 10 seconds and we get going. You get your moderate weight in hand. In your right hand might be a good idea to keep it the same. In three, in two, in one. One squat and then that opposite knee raising up. Stay to a single side for the first 30.
Good. My more manageable folk, you can tap the toe to the floor if you need balance-wise each time. Got 10 seconds through here. Finished up in three, in two, in one. We got 10 arrests. Let's switch those hands. Give me focus, folks. Give me focus. If we're getting tired, we're going to push. Three, two, one. Control the down. And show me a nice extension of that arm as we press up. Bingo. So we really get that back shoulder to work. We get some back muscle attached into the top of things. Love it. Ten seconds. We're going to be keeping the weight for that split stance next. Go finish it up in three, in two, in one. Split stance, one foot forward, one foot back, back foot on the toes, raising that single arm in a fly position in three, in two, in one. Once again, elbow can be bent. Give you a more manageable approach to what we're doing. Got a lot of strength in that forward leg, right? Got a lot of feeling through the core. We're staying tight, we're staying active, and we're staying safe by doing so. Awesome, that free arm is extended, kind of active through that free arm. Finished in three, in two, in one. Go ahead and switch it on over, opposite side. Put the weight up front, you're on the toes in the back. In three, in two, in one. Find where that works. Maybe you can play around with if your body's tilted more forward or coming up. If you're burning out, don't be afraid to bend the elbow. Don't be afraid to even take a minor break if you need it too. Awesome. Or you could just take that never say die approach and you just keep fighting all the way through it. All right, last little bit on this side. We go finished up in three, in two, in one. Come down to the floor. Your hollow hold comes up next. Little side crunches associated with it. Feet wider and higher in three, in two, in one. Little crunch over to one. Little crunch over to the other. Opposite leg this time, if you have that more manageable approach. One heel to the floor, that more manageable approach. Keep working, folks. Ten seconds. Following movement will be our figure four reverse crunch. Finished in three, in two. In one, take your left foot, put it around your right thigh. Extend your right leg out, hands down into the floor. Three, two, one. We get that reverse crunch. Uh, we're getting just a little bit of stretch on that left side. Now, more modern approach. We're going to keep that right knee a little extra bent. We can still do some good lifts in. If we're in that moderate approach right here, I still want you to try to give me a little extra tuck coming in towards the center, right? A little extra tuck before we drop back down. Three, two, one. Extend your leg out straight. The other one foot stays flat on the floor. Hip press with side kick starts in three, in two, in one. Kick it out to one. Bring it back in. If you're doing my more moderate approach, you're going to keep the leg wide, but you're going to rest your hips to the floor each time at the bottom. Moderate approach would go straight up and then come back down flat to the floor as a little recovery point. Yeah, so find control. Find your hip in your glute. Doing a lot of control. Three, two, one. One, down and rest for 10. You're switching. Next side, we get started in three, in two, in one. Once again, more manageable option for people is come down, rest to the hips to the floor before you press back up. All right, this is the last of our Tabata. I want you to dig in a little deep. I want you to feel strength and power. I want you to feel conviction that you're pushing through the last bits of this workout. And we're making this here, folks. Once we're done with this, we go into two, two, twos. Okay, we go finish with this hip press in three, in two, in one. 
Rest for a moment. Grab your two moderate weights. Have them on the floor. You've got your renegade rows, followed by your heel lifts. We go 10 seconds and we start. Last little bit. Renegade rows start in three, in two, in one. Smooth lifts on each side. Try to keep that body still. Same thing with those heel lifts. Make them smooth, then step up. Bring it up, weights up, two squats, two lunges, and repeat back to the floor. Hips forward for those of you on your knees. Bring it up, squats, lunges, weights up with that. Twenty seconds here. Twenty seconds. You're doing fantastic, folks. I know that we've got another hard workout through here when we put this tail into it. This is your opportunity to shine and push yourself into a successful weekend. Finished up in three, in two, in one. Let's put the weights down. We've got our mobility squat next. Feet wide, toes turned out. Bring it down to the bottom point and sit. Okay. One hand reaches up, comes back down, and then we switch it over. All right. If you need it up tall, we can stay here and still do that little press, the inside of the leg, as we get through that. We've got 15 seconds, and then we'll be on the side for those body rolls and that shoulder press. Okay, to the floor in three, two, one. Come down to the floor, face us on the side. You got both weights in hand, you got top arm extended, you got feet lifted in three, two, one. Roll it over, but not too far. 180 degrees is our max. Feet could be on the floor. We can just rotate still through those core and hip muscles, even with those feet on the floor. Find strength through that arm. All right, next up is bicycle kicks. We're gonna be putting down the weights. In three, two, one. Weights down, hands behind the head, legs up, opposite elbow meets opposite knee. You give me smooth, you give me knees bent if you need that more manageable approach. Regular bicycle is your option. Okay, and then last up, we're going to be going flat to the stomach. We've got our Superman single arm reaches. Turn to the floor, starting in three, two, one. Arms raise up. One arm comes down, then switch it over. More manageable. Elbows are here. We're going to extend, straighten the arm, and then bend at that elbow. Extend, straighten the arm, bend at the elbow. Smooth breathing. Got last little bit, everybody. Go finished up in three, in two, in one. Ding, ding, ding. The sound of that sweet bell one last time means that you have done a tremendous job out there. Reward yourself with some water. Let's start by hydrating ourselves first and foremost. The stuff that we are made the most out of. Oh, cool. Little reward, and then come down onto your back. Let your arms go overhead. Time to chill out. Time to relax. All right. So belly breathing, of course, from here. I want you to slow it down. I want you to deepen the breathing. And as we're doing that, I've got probably a little bit more to talk about than I usually do today, so I'm going to get started early, do my best to cue you through. If you know what your perfect stretch times are, don't be afraid to shift yourself in and out. Single leg up, hamstring stretch on one side. Start there. So today is Juneteenth, and this was 
it's a holiday that I don't think many of us were very aware of until recently, um, commemorating the end of slavery. And we're still dealing with a lot of issues of racism in our country, and a lot of it is inherently built into our system. And we know that. These are things that are coming up. These are conversations that are being had, um, especially being white males. You know, I, I think we're really kind of refocusing upon what people are given in their surroundings and how that affects your, your livelihood and your communities around you. Let's go ahead and bring that leg a little across. If you haven't done that already. And then when you are ready on that side, you can bend the knee and bring it further to the floor. And you can kind of work your way into there while I'm chit-chatting here. And so what I wanted to take was a little bit more of a health-geared approach on this Juneteenth and talk about some things that minorities and black people are really dealing with as major setbacks in healthcare, as well as just their overall food sources to them, those options around. Give me a nice big inhale in, a nice long exhale out, and then let's go ahead and switch it with your left leg coming straight up, hamstring stretch, and once again, you can move yourself around in and out of that if you need to. So first off, we were listening to a really great podcast a little while back about it from a doctor that we respect a lot, Dr. Mark Hyman, and he talked a lot about kind of the socioeconomic disparities of food. And we always talk about here the importance of how good foods really lead us to quality, better overall health. If you think about the things you put in your body, doesn't it make sense that they're going to have the biggest effect on your health? Well, if you think about an impoverished community and you're walking around in those neighborhoods, the only food that is generally available in those areas is going to be fast food options or like quick marts through there. And that stuff's not going to sell your fresh uh, organic type of produce. And so there's already a lack of ability to have access to those places. Not to mention that those foods tend to be a little bit more expensive. Fast foods tend to be a little bit cheaper. And fast foods are heavily processed with a bunch of stuff that does not do wonders for our health. Now, if you haven't found kind of the rotation through there, do that now. If you have, move yourself into the butterfly stretch next from here. And so I kind of wanted to to mouth off a little bit about how the government has these dietary guidelines, yet the government and so many of their studies and so many of their associations, like the American Heart Association, are sponsored by companies like Coca-Cola and Nestle. And these companies that make heavily processed foods, they put tons of sugar, tons of, tons of additives, tons of crap into our food, and then they have lobbyists within DC that are basically getting these sort of things prescribed into guidelines. Not only that, but a lot of the loan money, the governmental loan money that has gone out for, for businesses has gone out to fast food places. So we're actively, as a government, handing money to places where we know people's health is becoming worse. And I think that's a major issue that we need to check back on and go, how are we not providing more quality food options to these communities that are already impoverished and have less access to this. Nice big inhale in, nice long exhale out. Let's go ahead and switch our kneeling position from here. So we're gonna have left knee down, we're gonna have the right foot out in front, and then if you can, let's go ahead and squeeze your butt on the left, let's bring that left arm up, and if that right arm's removed, now we're practicing some good balance into there as well. Uh, also, like, it, this was really amazing from, 2013 to 2017, food and junk food advertising was targeted towards black television, black te targeted television, at a 50% increase. Junk foods were. For the teen, for the black teen, 120% more junk food related ads, specifically geared towards like soda and candy, was given, was sent towards black teen programming as opposed to whites. Let's go ahead and drop and switch the knee, opposite side, right arm will raise up. And this advertising was coming from these top companies that I identified earlier. We got Yummy Brands, who has like KFC and Taco Bell, McDonald's, General Mills. I mean, it, once again, these companies that are not providing health-related foods at all for the individual. And they're the ones pumping in the most advertising dollars into our youth, right? And our youth are learning and they're really figuring out the world around them. And part of that is the things that they come across on advertising. I think we should be doing a better job of keeping track of how much junk food is basically sold to our kids. 
Nice big inhale in, nice big exhale out. Let's get into a comfortable seat next. So I'll be on the heels. We'll do a little reaching overhead to one side. We'll hold it and we'll do some breathing. So that's my little food talk. And then I wanted to talk about the healthcare system and some horrible things that is horrible statistics that show up. And I'm going to run through just a few of them while we're here. Black infant mortality rate is two and a half times higher than white counterparts. Uh, doctors are less likely to prescribe pain medications and appropriate treatments to black people versus white people. Black men are 50% higher likelihood to develop prostate cancer and two times more likely to die from it. Let's go ahead and switch. One hand down, overhand up and over. 31% of white children who are basically labeled as having mental health problems receive some sort of mental health treatment. In comparison, 13% of minorities receive that. That's almost three times less. And then lastly, this one was really powerful. Black women are two to six times more likely to die from complications of pregnancy than white women. Let's go ahead and bring it down through here. Give me a few neck rolls to one side. After you've done three or four, you can switch it on over. And so there, I did some research into, you know, who are some good groups that really advocate for this stuff, who have lobbyists of their own who can go in there and fight these kind of junk food and these, this crap that happens to us. And the California Black Women's Health Project is one of those that I really liked. The African American Health Coalition was a second. And then the third one that I really liked was Full Circle Health. So three associations that are out there trying to kind of combat this stuff to try and make our world better. That's what I got for you. I know it's not necessarily the most relaxing of subjects to end the day, but it's important that we continue to bring this stuff up. And I think uh, to a large degree, it's important that we're outraged about this stuff because it's unfair. It's ridiculous. It shouldn't be a part of our world around us. We are in 2020. You know, I mean, we should have moved past this a long time ago and there's inherent things associated with our communities that we need to change and our government needs to be a huge part of that. We've got an election coming up in November. Pay attention to what's going on because that's where a lot of reform can happen as well. All right, everybody. Love you. Thanks for joining us in. Let's be great to each other. Let's make this world a better place, and we will see you soon. And take time to educate yourselves on Juneteenth about what's been going on in the civil rights movement for the past 400 years. Boom. I asked Jackson if he'd jump in and say something, so that was all him right there. Very good, everybody. Take care.